Welcome to Cadence Point YC's Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, we will show you how to create translational and rotational periodic domains. There are going to be some cases where you're going to be faced with a geometry that is inherently symmetric. This is one of such geometries. In this case, we have rotational symmetry and translational symmetry as well. In these cases, it might actually be more convenient to work with a smaller portion of the entire model in order to make your grid generation and simulation processes faster and more efficient. In this particular example, we're going to work with a smaller portion of that geometry, which is that one right there. So let's go ahead and isolate that portion and see how we go about this. Now, keep in mind that after the grid has been created for the smaller portion of the geometry, the full model can actually be recovered by performing a copy-paste operation and then a translational or rotational transformation as needed. In order to ensure that the full grid is conformal, you need to, of course, make sure that the surface grid for those symmetry domains, like that one right there for the rotation and this one right here, for the translation are actually exactly the same. And that is the objective of this video. In order to ensure that these domains are exactly the same, you need to create periodic copies of them. In order to illustrate how to create these periodic copies, I have already created a portion of my surface grid. The only thing that is left in order to complete this surface grid is to create a rotational periodic copy of that domain and a translational periodic copy of that domain right there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select this domain right here and go to create periodic. And in this case, it's going to be a rotational copy, so rotate. So there are several elements that you have to specify right here, like for example, the angle of rotation and of course the axis of rotation. So in this case, the angle is 90 and the axis of rotation can be specified in three different ways. You either select the curve or it can be specified by selecting two points or by selecting one point and a direction. In this case, I'm going to use this third option. The point for, for my axis of rotation is 0, 0, 0, and the direction of that axis is the Z direction. As you can see, a yellow preview of that new domain that is about to be created is displayed in there. Since it is located in the correct location, I'm going to click OK, and the periodic copy has been created right there. Let's go ahead and repeat the process for this other domain right here. And we're going to create a periodic copy of that. But in this case, it's going to be a translational copy. So once again, you have the yellow preview of your new domain that is about to be created. And right here, you can see that in order to create this translational copy, you have to specify a few things. One of the things is that offset vector. If you know exactly what that offset vector is going to be, you can simply type it right here, or you can simply zoom in and select the appropriate points to define that translation, like these two points right here. And once you're happy with that, you can simply click OK and that translational periodic copy has been created. If you move to the list panel, you're going to see, I'm expanding the domain list right here. You can see that all those domains that you created are indicated as being periodic copies of each other. Once this is done, of course, you have to go to the grid merge operation to ensure that you don't have any free connectors or bounding those new domains that you have created, which is the case right here. At this point, I can simply select all my domains and assemble my block. Once the block is created, you can simply recover the full geometry by performing a copy paste operation and either a rotational transformation or a translational transformation. In this case, I perform a rotational transformation. And as you can see that I can simply join these two blocks into one. And that can be done because my symmetry domains are actually periodic copies, so they're exactly the same. I'm going to copy this block right here. And again, Control C, Control V for copy paste. And I'm going to create a translation of that block. And again, because I use periodic domains, I can select these two blocks right there and 
simply join them into a single block. And last but not least, I'm going to create a mirror copy of that. And this is going to be, after I join these blocks, my full geometry. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.